You're listening to the PTFO podcast with your hosts, Burnsy, Jimmy, Kyle, and Colby. What's going on? Welcome to episode 10 of PTFO. Kyle is back. We got seven episodes into this and he thought it was time to take a vacation. Where the fuck have you been? I went on a dirt bike trip to Death Valley straight up. Didn't give a fuck, but I had phone service. Probably could have gone on a call and been on it, but I didn't want to because I'm a fucking rebel. Sup? <laughs> and then it took us and then it took us almost a half hour to figure out your recording shit. Uh, definitely not my fault. We're going to have to um, blame that one on Colby. Yeah, so for those listening at home in their car, in the comfort of their own headphones right now, when Kyle was gone, I had a perfectly cool setup at my place, but he came back and he's like, hey, let's do it at my place. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, he just farted on me too. And then so I came here. I came, I, I came here for to get farted on. Anyway, uh, I had the cool setup. We tried doing it. It worked on the computers until we got on Skype, and then no one could hear. Until you add a second microphone is what's fucked it up. His microphone worked, mine didn't. Let's go. Get into the first topic of the day. Jimmy, introduce the first topic before we go off the rails five minutes into this. I mean, it's not even going off the rails. (laughs) We never made it on the track. Didn't that fart Um, sound funny? Why does a fart sound so differently recorded than it does like when you actually hear it, you know? Colby's got pink guy now. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about, I guess you guys covered this on your, your website, and I'm actually covering it today. The, the two guys that thought it was a brilliant maneuver to take their long rifles and their ski mask and their GoPro into the police station because they felt that they were wronged or, or they got a, a ticket, a speeding violation, and they felt it wasn't warranted. So... This is what they did, and it it just it pisses me off. I can't stand seeing shit like this where people like to use their rights, like to exercise their rights, and then they wonder why they go into a police station and almost get shot. Yeah. I mean, Idiots. if you haven't seen the video, it's of two guys. One of them is in a ski mask. He's holding a long rifle, and he has a GoPro, and I guess he had a sidearm, too. He had, body he, had ar- he had body armor on, too. And he had body armor on, and they walked into the police headquarters, and then the police told him, drop your shit, I'm going to kill you, drop your shit are now, we, and they continued. Are we allowed to play it on this show? Can we edit yeah, you it can in? Yeah, you can play up to 30 seconds before we get in trouble. All right, we'll edit it in right now. Dude, put that on the ground. Put it on the ground. Put it on the ground. I'm not talking. Put it on the ground now. Put it on the ground or you are dead. Did they put? I didn't watch it. Did they puss out when the cops were like aim their guns at them? They eventually. No, go, no. They no. spent the. They spent. They spent the next minute or two yeah. arguing with them, be like, "We're we're exercising our right. I'm not even armed." The other guy was saying, and the cops are like, "I will fucking kill you." Yeah, the cops you deserve don't. oh an award, and this is what I put in the article, like. The cops' patience is beyond, like, I, I mean, you see stories about them doing worse stuff with, like, in a, in a worse situation, like, unarmed. To black people. Yeah, these guys came in with guns, <laughs> and they literally just, like, like, like Jimmy said, just handled it beyond professionally. And then the other thing, which I put in the article. Well, no, no, no. They didn't handle it professionally. They handled it appropriately. appropriately. There's nothing professional about, I'm going to fucking kill you. But, with that being said... They have every right to. I mean, I just, I can't stand people that do this whole exercise you're right and then they abuse it. They obviously go in with the intention of trying to get attention. They're trying to make the cops to go viral. They're trying to make the cops do something stupid. It's the same people who have like oh, uh, open carry laws in their state and they walk up and down the street with an AR 15 around their shoulder just, yeah, just because yeah. they can. I'm all for exercising your right. I have no issue with that. But when you have an agenda, and yeah. which this dude obviously did, I, I, wanna, it, I don't wish bodily harm on him, but it wouldn't have really hurt my feelings if they shot him in like the foot or something. <laughs> yeah, that's just a, it's just a, it's one of those things where I, like I looked at it. It's like you have a, I mean, probably less than 50, 50 percent chance of dying to go viral in a way. I'm surprised they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't get killed. Yeah, me too. I'm surprised they didn't get shot right when they walked through the door. I agree, hundred percent. Right? The other thing I put in there, so was like an analogy of like, yeah, I was expecting a lot more backlash, like people being like, "It's their right," which there wasn't surprisingly. But there, no, no, there is some. Oh, there is some. I mean, yeah, but I put in there, I was like, I understand that it's completely legal to do this, but it's also completely legal to have twenty shots of Jaeger in your own home, but it's just not a good idea. 
You know, like it's a yeah. dumb idea to do that. Like no, you, you could die. It's just childish. I mean, it's kind of like looking at something. So you say, say you're holding a glass and your mom says, put the glass down and you just fucking drop it and it shatters. You know, like that's not what she meant. Like the things in the constitution, it doesn't really mean do, do like childish shit and walk into a police station with a mask, like looking like an armed robber. You know, body I, armor. Yeah, I would have like been like, just... if they got shot in the face, we're like, yeah, dude. If somebody rolled up, if so, if I had a gun and somebody fucking pulled in my driveway with an AK, a mask, and body armor, they're getting shot in the face. Like, I mean, yeah, it, it's there's one thing to be in the Constitution, and there's one like common fucking sense. Like when your mom tells you to put the thing down, you don't just drop it and it shatters on the ground. You know, so, like she didn't fucking right. mean that. Like certain things in the Constitution, it's like, like it's. That's not what it fucking meant. It doesn't mean you can just walk into any old place for no fucking reason. It pretty much means you can protect yourself, you know? Especially in a, it, it walk into a police headquarters. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. what, and it's like, so we're, we're all in agreement that they're, they're fucking idiots. Yeah. yeah that's an inst- they, that's a instant, th- instant three stars on GTA. You never do anything that can get you instantly <laughs> three stars. That's how I live life. If it's going to get you three stars in GTA instantly, you don't do it. That's a good analogy. Yeah, it's like, it's like, like the that. freedom of speech thing. It's like, well, I can, I'm freedom of speech. I can say whatever you want. And then you walk up to a black dude and say, yo, nigger. You know, like, you can't do that. You deserve to get punched in your face. It doesn't matter if it's legal or not. Like, there's common sense that, that you, sh- like, it, it's just childish, man. It's just childish shit. If the dude that says the N word gets punched in the face, I'm fine with it, you know, even though he, he, it's in, within his right, you know, but. Um. Yeah. Fuck that guy. It just comes well, down to another stupid decision made by stupid people on the internet. Well, the, they had an agenda. I mean, plain and simple. But yeah. what Kyle was saying with freedom of speech, or whatever, freedom of speech only protects you from like the government not arresting you. It doesn't protect you from getting knocked out. Yeah. So what do you think happens to him? Do you think they're gonna have charges? I don't know. I haven't seen anything on it. No, I don't. I, don't, I uh, I followed up with it this morning as quick as I could just to see if I could do an update and. So the video that I posted, which was, I mean, it was from uh, YouTube, like some guy, he just straight screen, uh, here's what's also funny about it is he screen recorded the dude's Facebook post. So the guy got like a million views, whatever, on the video. And it's not the guy who uploaded it. It's just like a dude that was like, he literally just screen recorded the guy. So the dude almost died for no fame and now everyone hates him. But there was no update on that guy's Facebook when I looked. Now these dudes, are, they, what they said when they walk, they were walking in. They're like, we felt kind of threatened about an hour ago. Yeah, they the had like a. It was like a complaint for getting pulled over. Like if you want to file. Well, a what com- they're gonna do is they're they're gonna spend that shit on them. They're gonna use that vocabulary where they said we felt threatened, and then they're walking into a police head- headquarters <laughs> oh, yeah. fully armed. That's assuming yeah, they're sense. fucked. Like if you want to file masks. a complaint, I don't know. Well, it's in their right. He, he said it was cold outside. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Sure. He's, was there? And then he's got the GoPro strapped to his shoulder. Yeah, he had two GoPros. He had one that uh, face cam and then yeah. a shoulder cam. Just in case I die, I'm going out on GoPro. And then he had his cameraman with the tripod and a big camera. Yeah, I wonder who uploads like the footage of his GoPro stuff if he gets shot in the face. Like who uploads that? <laughs> you know Cops. what I mean? <laughs> I guess so. That one cop, though, if you listen to, well, you, you, we played the audio or at least a clip of it. That dude, he was jacked. He was like, I will fucking kill you if you don't put that down right now. No, I, good for him. If you, I mean, yeah, at least he it, gave him a it's warning. It's a common sense thing. And like, that's, that's not like even the cop speaking. That's just a normal person speaking. Like, if I had a gun or any normal person had a gun and a dude was coming at you like that, that's exactly what I, I wouldn't even give him that long. I'd be like, fucking put that shit down. If he moves, I mean, you have like you have no reason to not shoot him. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, or even you know, when uh, even when I was saying earlier, like if someone was walking up and down your street with like an AR-15 around their shoulder and like a mask on, like showing off that they can they have a, a open carry, wouldn't that make you feel intimidated? If because you have like absolutely because you have like kids, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like he- I would probably, I honestly, if let's say just hypothetically, they're my neighborhood, like you said, dudes walking down the street past my house with a ski mask and a long rifle and whatever. I mean, me personally, I've got him scoped in with my rifle through my window. I mean, the whole time. That's, I mean, I wouldn't be taking any chances. And I wouldn't be taking any chances for him in the neighborhood with any other houses or kids. I would just, Dude, I, I actually know. have a crazy story from uh, my parents' old house. This happened a few years ago. Like, it's my parents, uh, they moved out of this house now, but it was 
pretty much a safe neighborhood. My dad was like out grabbing something from his truck. And these kids drove by in their car and like opened fire with an airsoft gun on my dad. <laughs> <laughs> did did he flip out? Yeah, I mean they had to call the police. He's got like a he's got like a pellet in his arm now that's like underneath the skin. What? Like, dude, what are these kids doing? That's a good way to so, get shot. So, <laughs> so do you you shoot them in, if they let's say they're walking up your sidewalk and you're in an open carry state? Do you shoot them in the face, Kyle, or do you just like blow their kneecaps out and not? murder them what um so if they roll up to my house with all that shit like uh, just like he did just like that dude he's he's got his he's got his long rifle strapped over his neck but he's not he's not like holding it and i think the whole thing with open carry he was stating he's not holding it with aggressive man or even touching it it may just be like dangling there and he's not supposed to touch it in an open carry situation or whatever i don't know exactly but just like that same scenario He's he's gonna walk up and ask you for a cup of sugar. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess it depends. Like, because I would have a con- like almost be like, dude, what 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 are you doing? You know, like that type of thing. But if it, I mean, if he wasn't responding or whatever, it kept coming forward like without like stating what's going on. You know, maybe if he stated yeah. his like purpose, like I'm just here to you know yada yada. But I mean, I'm shooting the fucker in the chest or the face, man. Like, like because if I shoot him in the leg or, or if I or something, he has a gun. He's gonna shoot back, you know. Yeah, last stand, right? Dude. Last stand. And I mean, I I feel like if somebody rolled, I mean, I know it's different when it's my own personal property. But if somebody rolled up like right. that, I would just say this fucker was walking. He had a ski mask, an AK forty seven, and some tactical gear on. You know, like I guarantee I would not get in trouble if he was. You know, if it, I mean, if he's like. I guess it depends on like the wording type stuff, but I would just be like, I, I felt threatened. Like I wasn't really even paying attention to what he was saying. I was paying attention to the automatic rifle he had around him, you know? Yeah. You have but to check the laws in your personal states. property. Isn't there like a law in some state where if someone even comes on your property, you can just blast them? Was, Absolutely. Isn't that where the George or Zimmerman dude got off is because it was like protecting his ground or whatever? That's like your stand your ground laws. But there's like some state where if someone even steps foot on your property, you can just blow them away. I think it's Texas. That sounds Probably. accurate. Don't fuck with Texas. But there's also like, uh, like sometimes some states you can't defend, you know, so say, say somebody comes to your house with fists, like you can't just shoot them. You know, you have to kind of, right, right. you kind of have to like eye for it. Like you can't just, it's like eye for an eye or it's like got to be equal force. So they wasn't there a, a wasn't there some story, wasn't blades. there some crazy story a few years ago where, uh, it was like, uh, breaking and entering where the, the criminal, the, 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 the criminal. The bar, he he fell through a skylight. Yeah, and he landed sued, on a kitchen and he knife, sued because he, he got sued hurt. The homeowner. Hey, <laughs> that's he from a hurt. that's from liar liar. That's what happens to the lady on liar liar when he she says uh, yeah. he fell through and landed on a kitchen knife. I would have got him ten. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Carrey, man, classic. <laughs> Love Jim Carrey. You ever seen fun with Dick and Jane? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. with Jim Carrey. Yeah, that shit was funny. Where he goes, I got the yard back. <laughs> when he went out and like, ran and grabbed all the sod. But, uh, the other Jim Carrey's the man. He is Who the do man. you guys like more, right, Jim well, Carrey or so Adam Sandler? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Far. Adam Sandler is yeah. washed yeah, Adam up. Sandler when we were young. Oh, oh I'm, saying, I'm saying like in their careers. I'm saying like today. Adam Sandler when it was Lunch Lady Land, Adam Sandler. Like back way way back, his uh, Adam Gilmore, his, mo- Adam his movies, his new movies that he does on Netflix are the most watched movies on Netflix. So yeah, I saw that. I, I saw old that. school Adam Sandler, That's but Jim Carrey's just been funny as fuck the whole time. The yeah. thing with Adam Sandler too is, I think at some point he got like the fuck you money, and he was like, I don't give a shit anymore. Like people are still watching me do the same. Yeah, he has his own like bullshit. he has his like own movie production, and yeah, he just Happy invites Madison. he just yeah he just invites his friends on, and they just make a shit movie, throw it on Netflix. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just throw in a random topic here that's not on the list, just because of what you just said, Colby. Why you guys were setting up your stuff? Me and Birds were talking about just that, like fuck you money or getting board money we were talking about the lady that's that just got named the secretary of education betsy devos or davos i don't betsy know DeVos, and, yeah. anyway yeah something whatever anyway the point is she's a billionaire and she's like contributed like so much money and pr- basically bought her way in she's a complete idiot in a, in a position she doesn't need to be in but that's not the point the point is we were talking about i said mark cuban was going to run in uh, in the next election and i said because he's bored He's got billions of dollars, nothing better to do. So now why not get into politics? And Burns is like, are you fucking kidding me? If I had a billion dollars, I'd never get bored. And that kind of goes into 
just like money to burn. I mean, do you, do you think there's a point where you could get so much money that you would just get bored with it and you would want to go pursue something just for the, for shit? AKA uh, Donald Trump. Yeah. AKA Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. He's a, I mean, he's Mark a, Cuban, Kevin O'Leary, the dude from Shark Tank. He's running for the, the Canadian prime minister. I mean, he's almost a billionaire. This, this lady's a billionaire I that think, is now the secretary of education. I think bored is, is not the right word because I think a lot of those people, like, they have a, they're, they're power kinda, hungry. Yeah. They they're develop an hungry. ego. To be a billionaire, you've developed an ego over time. I mean, you're the asshole in the meetings that's like, no, I'm giving you 10%. If you don't like it, get the fuck out. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would be the, I would be the chillest billionaire in history. I would do whatever I want. I would, don't really bother me. I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> I don't care about anybody else. Leave me alone. I just think about Dan Bilzerian. Oh yeah, and he's you know what he like faked his way into that money, and now he's just gets paid to do absolutely nothing. Yeah, like Jimmy what said. You, like you Jimmy said, bored? Jimmy said he would just be all you would see from him is some Instagram photos. Oh yeah, my, I'd be gone. I mean, I, you'd see a couple random Instagram photos of some cool shit. <laughs> Other than that, I'd be doing my thing. What about you, Kyle? What would you do? I don't know. It's hard. To, it's kind of hard to. I mean, all these people with a fuck ton of money, I guess it would be, like, because that's kind of, like, as a dude, like, so the women's kind of role in life is, like, raising the kids. You got a dude, it's to, like, <laughs> you know. Here comes Kyle no, with his, no, with his no, offensive it, no, comment that he's got to explain. No, so. it, no, but I mean, from, like, from like a marriage standpoint, like, the women, the women are, like, all about, like, <laughs> you know, like, taking care of the family. And the dude is, like, I need to provide for the family. So, like. All these dudes that provide billions of dollars for their family, and uh, I guess it would get bored because you really don't have to provide for your family, so you might as well get power hungry and go for the power, man. I guess what else are you going to do? I would just like to. I would like to separate myself from what Kyle just said. Not me. I, I think it's a good point. No, what do you mean? That's uh, what I mean. From like a you, you just that's just like Trump saying. Uh, the he thinks the women should dress more like women in the White House. What do you mean the women? Are more they wanted from like to a, more of from like from, a marriage standpoint. No, I was just kind of that's that dude that that's not true though. There's plenty of women that want to be the provider in a marriage. Yeah, but you weren't I brought mean, up. You, you weren't brought up to be like, hey, okay, when well, you if grow you up, state how I was brought up, that's a different story. But speaking on behalf of in current times, I think that's the farthest fucking thing from the truth. Well, I mean, I'm just I've saying, just basically, I've, I've separated only been myself in one marriage, from the hate. So I'm just basing it off my one marriage, like. Like right. my wife could give a fuck less, like how much money I make, you know. And I'm thinking, right. like, and then I'm like, well, my main, like, I'm not like worried about, you know, like, so like my kids, like, it's not my job in in my current relationship to figure out like how are we gonna, you know, like she's the one that enrolls them in like uh, all their preschool classes and stuff like that. Like my focus is like, okay, how am I gonna like provide for my family and make sure you know make things easier on us. You know, and that's kind of like her role. So I'm just speaking from my perspective. I know, I know there's like difference. Like there's plenty of women out there that want to, you know, provide for their family, but I'm, yeah, I'm probably the majority of, of relationships. It's, you know, the dude is like the guy that provides for the family, you know, and the women, you know, are more like they really don't care about, they're more about like taking, taking care of run. the kids and stuff like that. It was a bearing a child, you know, yada, yada. But, um, well, I mean, so that's kind of what I meant. Like, yeah, you meant like, equal Kyle, partnership. Kyle, Kyle, I missed you. <laughs> well, we do I mean, miss you, I, Kyle. I told, like, I told Rachel, I'm like, I want to be a fucking millionaire, and I like, cause it's weird, cause I work at home, and sometimes when she's has like a day off of work or something, she's like, she's like, oh, you know, let's go do this. I'm like, I can't, I, I I'm working, you know, and then, uh, Same then here. I go, hey, I want to be a millionaire one day. She's like, we don't need a million dollars, and I'm like, I know we don't, but I like, it's just like what I just what I want to do you know like I want to fucking I want a million dollars in my damn bank account you know but it's I know it's I was just kind of speaking from my perspective and like trying to think like why would I ever want to run you know for president why would I ever want to be um you know like a senator or something like that and and I guess I would say I guess I, it's, I, a, I it really, is a, it's a power thing I guess it's a power I don't thing. need no power I yeah, just want to chill and I mean it's just some of these people like some of these billionaires, like we don't even know how they think. Like they think way differently than than you or I think, you know. So they're highly motivated people. So once they hit a certain plateau, they're like, "Wait, if I'm a fucking president, you know, or like if I'm a senator, that's the you most know, power I can I can, I can it, change yeah. things to make me make more money, type of thing, you know." So oh shit, that's Trump, dude. <laughs> so I don't know. He's I like a, from my Trump is like a poor person's idea of a rich person, though. Yeah, there's plenty of women out there that want to 
you know, want to provide for their family. But um, I was kind of speaking from my actual relationship. Who doesn't want to be the stay-at-home dad, though? That's the life. That's the dream. Uh, my friend's dad growing up, he was a stay-at-home dad. And uh, he bought, like, I'm not, he bought a boat. He bought jet skis. He bought in a, a Baskin Robbins, like, switched the way that they did their ice cream. So he bought, like, the old freezer. So he had, like, 20 flavors of ice cream, like, at all times. So I was like, dude, you're living the life, man. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. But that being said, like that would probably he's the type of dude that got got bored, went and bought a boat. Like, yeah, I bought a boat, impressed my son's friends, and I was like, fuck yeah, you impressed me, dude. Take me around the lake. Bitch. Slut. I didn't mean to take us off topic, but <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> there is no topics. Right, what's, the best. what's what's up next? Uh we have uh we were gonna talk about the Casey Neistat sellout video. If you guys saw that, I don't know. Yeah. Do you guys want to segue into that? Didn't sure. see I it. Mean, Explain I'll, to me. Uh, the, Basically, yeah. he starts off the video with like a it. wad of 100s, which is prop money, but he burns it and like lights it on fire. And then he explain how he, he got all that shit for being called a sellout when he he CNN paid him 25 million or his estimated whatever. I mean, 25 million dollar deal with CNN, and he he basically explained that when your kids. You, you dream, you dream big dreams are right at the forefront. And then when you become an adult mortgage and, and bills and responsibility, push your dreams back on the back burner. And then the, the ultimate goal is to work your ass off and bring those dreams back up to the forefront somehow. And, but then when you get there and you do that, people call you a fucking sellout and his whole message you was, almost and I totally that. agree so that, exactly. yeah, if you get to the point, I tweeted out. If you get to the point in your life, career, whatever, where you're being called a sellout, then you're probably on your way to your dreams. I mean, it's the same thing as clickbait to a degree. People abuse the 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 phrase. And uh, I mean, just people that call call you a sellout for whatever reason are just salty motherfuckers that want to live vicariously through you <clears throat> and they'll never get there themselves. Yeah, That's it, my it you, on you it. only usually hear that word sellout with people that are like in the limelight, like on YouTube or celebrities or musicians. I don't think, do you ever hear it when you're like in a regular job? Like if you're at an office job and you work your ass off for like five years in that position and you get a huge promotion, do your coworkers call you a sellout? No, not or at do all. They that's or do they congratulate you? That's the problem with like living in the in the world we live in with like social media and like uh, people that can comment on your life. Like my buddy gets promoted. Everyone's like, congratulations. You get a sponsored deal and get 10 grand, you're a sellout. You know, it just sucks. Well, let me pop in here real quick so anybody that calls anybody a sellout without really thinking about what they're saying is a fucking faggot so think about this what what it people don't even think like okay i'm gonna use this this keyword sellout without even actually so being a sellout would be here's a perfect example i always talk shit about people that do vape tricks like people that not not people that vape to get over cigarettes, but people that just vape because they think it's cool. Like they had this the vape, contest. October Vape Fest, like October Fest, but it was for vapors. And I was like, those people are fucking douchebags. Like people that need to do tricks with vapes and and they they're just doing it to do it. Like no cigarettes or nothing. So I always talk shit about it, right? So for some reason, I had I've had multiple vape companies hit me up and say, Hey, will you promote our product. And I said, that'd be kind of weird because I always fucking talk shit about people vaping, you know? And they're like, oh, I don't care. But that would, if I took that product and I got paid to promote it, that would be me selling out because I fucking always said, no, vaping's gay, vaping's gay, vaping's gay. And then I just out of nowhere do a promotion for money, just for money to like promote stuff for vapors, you know? That is selling out. Like if, if I was with a company and I was like, man, I would never want to be the CEO of this fucking company, you know, like fuck that. And you get all your coworkers all jacked up. Like, yeah, that would be so stupid. And then they're like, we'll give you a million dollars to be the CEO of the company. And you're like, okay, you know, like that, <laughs> like that would be selling out yeah. from an employee standpoint, you know, but like people will say just cause you make money is selling out. And that's like my biggest fucking pet peeve ever. Like people always tell me that because I don't post YouTube videos that much anymore. They're like, dude, you're a fucking sellout for this website and stuff like that. I'm like, when did I ever say I wasn't going to do 
like do a website. Well, I'm not to mention, actually, actually, yeah. dude, way back in the beginning when I first started watching you, you said I want to end up with a website where I can put all my shit and not worry about getting copyright. Yeah, and I would say I would always tell people like, like YouTube you better enjoy this forever. shit now because I'm not going to be doing it forever. You know, there's no way, let alone 40 years old, but there's no way by 30 years old I'm going to be sitting here on Xbox Live talking shit to 13 year old kids, prank calling hookers like. It's temporary, man. Like I, I, I watch a bunch of YouTubers, and I'm like, all these people hit a plateau, and then they slowly decrease, aka like Epic Meal Time. Like they were the shit back then. You go look at their videos; they got multiple millions of followers. Even myself, I have multiple millions of followers at one point, and like my videos are getting like sixty thousand views a video. And I mean, it's a little like Epic Meal Time never stopped, but it, like it's not selling out. It's like my mindset is, how can I improve? You know, how can I work less when I'm older, you know, rather than now? You know, I'll put in the work now so I I can work less when I'm older. But that's not selling out. It, 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 well, not to mention uh, YouTube took away your livelihood and you had to go make money. And that's like, oh, yeah, I've sold out because I was making now zero dollars because they took my channel away. Yeah. And I had to make money. So yeah. I made a website and grew a Facebook page. And now I'm a sellout. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And every time I think about sellout, it's like music, like all these all these musicians, like all these smaller bands and stuff, they're like, fuck that. We never do hip hop for money, you know? And then, then out of nowhere, they stop, they start doing hip hop because they're like, wait, we can make a lot more money doing this, you know? Maroon 5. Yeah, like that. Well, the, one of the big things with it was, it was, he quit doing his daily vlogs, Casey Neistat. And apparently that's stabbing his viewers in the back because that's what they came to expect from him. And then he did the, he announced the CNN deal and they're like, you're a sellout. I, I, it blows my mind because, the dude busted his ass for two years, and you know those videos took forever. That was his life. And he did them every day, and you got to watch them for free. Yeah. And then he goes, and he makes this deal with CNN, and he's a sellout. If I, if I were him, I'd be giving him all the bird, yeah. which he was. Yeah, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't need them anymore. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the bottom line is, like, I always also look at it in sports too. Like when, I, like there's different like tiers of it. Like when LeBron went to Miami, as people called it like a sellout move and stuff. It's like he would have got more money if he stayed in Cleveland. He didn't sell out to go try and win some championships. Like you can't just call a guy that you envy or hate or want to be like, but don't want to tell people you want to be like them a sellout just because you don't like a decision they make. It wasn't uh, a financial I, I, gain. What it is is the viewers, they get attached to and they get the expectation. Like Kyle said, he was doing whenever he was doing his Omegle stuff. The expectation is he'll do this forever. Yeah. And nobody really thinks that Kyle has his own life path and he wants to do this and this and this. Doesn't fucking matter. Put an Omegle video out, fucker. Yeah, yeah you know? I get I get that. I get that too. Yeah, yeah, Burns, to same do, thing. To do like same with me videos. with Call of Duty. If I do anything... Like, if I put up a top 10, like, today, I've got a top 10 best gaming accessories under 50 bucks. And I'm, I guarantee you, in the comment section, why don't you post Call of Duty anymore? You're a Call of Duty channel. Just, it's going to happen. Yeah, I agree with Kyle, though. When I think of sellout, I think of, like, products that you would promote that you don't really believe in. Like, we haven't done any sponsored ads on this podcast yet but it would be like us <laughs> <laughs> it would be it would be like us doing like a vape ad and kyle reading it yeah but but, but if okay, i did okay, that but, i would definitely say like i don't fucking vape like vaping is gay but i'll read this ad you know like I, <laughs> I mean i don't know if i could do that but i would definitely do something like that and say like i would be completely honest you know i've never i've never done an ad or anything that i'm just like like acted like i was super into that shit you know like, I mean, there are some, like, movies in, in, like, gaming apps and stuff like that that you don't really know about, you know, but I don't, I don't, like, fully act like I'm fucking super into this unless I really, like, kind of am, you know? Uh, or it'd be, like, back in the day when that uh, energy gum came out and they wanted everyone to promote it, and I was like, nah, that shit is bullshit. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not promoting something that I don't use myself, or I wouldn't buy myself. Or the gaming but glasses. Then, then again, then again, <laughs> yeah, gaming glasses. then again, hold on, hold on. Here's where the, the gray area comes though, because, okay, let's say Burns, you don't like that, that gaming gum. It was, it was a scam. You didn't like it. But if they approached you and said, all right, we know you don't like it, but one promo and they're going to pay you some absorbent amount, absorbent amount, like, We'll pay you fifty grand for a video. I mean, you're probably I mean, gonna money, fucking do the video. Money does talk, but ah, 
I that's think a there's tough, a level. That's a tough I think, question. Yeah, I think there's a level, and it depends on where you're at in your life. If you have like, I think, I think anyone. Yeah. I mean, if I say yes, people are gonna give me shit. But I think anyone, if they paid you fifty thousand dollars to do an ad, but money that's talks. so so ridiculous that you yeah. almost have to do it. If like, like if someone was like, was like yeah, if they said it was like, oh, we're gonna give you a thousand dollars. I mean, that's pretty. That's an easier one to pass up. But if somebody was sure, like, hey, for a hundred million, we would you cheat agree? on your wife? Can we agree that? That money talks, and even oh yeah, money if talks you didn't for sure. Like the product, I mean, if Kyle, if I was, if I was Vape Nation, and I knew you didn't like us or whatever, and I said, okay, I want you to promote this. I don't want you to say a negative thing about it. I want you to drive traffic to this link, and I'll pay you one hundred fifty thousand cash up front. You're fucking doing it. Most likely. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's saying there there is a level <laughs> okay. to be a sellout. Yeah. We're not saying none of us yeah. would be sellouts. If it came a million dollars to go do this like and you completely hate it like a million dollars you can live with yourself a little bit for being a sellout but and if you'll it probably was like 1500 bucks you know and you're like to a certain point it's not worth it but that that's unrealistic like nobody's gonna pay you that much you know but there they, are, I they guess should there are, though hit us up yeah i mean i guess <laughs> yeah yeah any vape like companies uh, out there like what? you want to put us to the test you want to <laughs> you want you want to you want to test us <laughs> like uh pka used to say if the money's there we don't care yeah yeah yeah, everyone, and everyone just has to give everybody level. here, let's let's go ahead and um, kind of tenderize everybody here on the show for all of our viewers. There will come a point in the near future where there's probably going to be sponsors for this show, and we're probably going to be pushing different products. Who knows what those products are? And hopefully, our our viewers don't consider us sellouts. Whatever we get, what you- it's going to be a benefit for you. Something that you would like. And us. And us. And I'm just going to put an asterisk in it right now. Like most, probably the products that we're getting, none of us have ever fucked with. So, yeah. Um, Unless you get I'm not cool saying shit. if I support them or not. <laughs> All right. Should we move? I think as long as we're completely transparent. Yeah. Well, and, I don't think yeah. that podcast people really expect the people to have used. I mean, in a way, like if you're going to go pay Joe Rogan to promote your like cooking thing, whatever. Joe Rogan's not using that shit. They probably know that. They just want the people, hopefully people listen, pick up on it. Yeah, and I brought up the vape excuse because I would go hard on people not vaping. You know, like, I would just, I would post all these memes and shit like, like you're, like how to spot a gay guy, you know, like stuff like that, like just fucking going hard. And, but I mean, if the vape people would have offered me enough money, I would have, like without saying anything negative, like I would have had a huge smile on my face the whole time, you know, like yeah, you would have. Well, you would have wore a t shirt that said "I love vaping." Yeah, I would have I mean, made it. Let's be I honest. would have made it like so over the top about liking vaping that you're that like they, they would have knew you were bullshit. Yeah, that type of thing, <laughs> sarcastic ish. Like yeah, like these dudes wanted to send me like pens and stuff, and I'm like, I'm like, I even told them like, I don't know if you follow my page, but like, I rip into people that vape, but. But yeah, I mean, you'd almost be like one of those, um, those infomercials. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we would call it like excited. a retard price. Like if somebody wants to like get, like yeah. when you're talking about the ad you did the other day for like you know for almost like double digit thousand dollars, I was like, well, yeah, that's fucking retard money. Like why? Like it would be retarded to not do it. You know? Yeah. Maybe sure. not the right word, retard. Too late. It's Probably out there. not. But Probably I'm not talking. I'm not talking. So. This is actually a good segue into into iDubs. Oh saying yeah. Saying the N like there's some word like when I say faggot, it has nothing at all to like the word faggot to me is like calling somebody stupid, you know? Like when I say retard, like I'm just meaning like somebody that does dumb shit. I know it is offensive, but I've used the like the word for so long that it has they've turned into different meanings. You know? Right. No, I didn't know we were point. talking about iDubs today. I had a different topic to segue into. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, threw it into the I-dubs. I only threw it into the iDubs one because I just thought it was extremely incredible that that guy got that many views with that many likes on a video where he literally talks about saying the N-word with a hard R. And it was amazing. I mean, he got 1.6 million views with like, what, 500,000 likes in a day? Well, the reason was because he broke he broke down. He, I mean, he truly showed her at the core as being a true hypocrite when it came to it so that girl's the, a cunt. The hate kind yeah, of that girl's not to her well it's just cool like to see i mean then this is a, another just tip of the hat to like the video and like the quality and stuff like that like you can tell like 
that he puts time and effort into stuff. And then you look at like other people who are wondering like, oh, I'm, all my shit's down. And it's like, well, you know why? It's because you just will poop out anything. Like that, like that video was very well put together. And I watched an entire 20 minute video on YouTube, which is super rare. That's what he's known for. Yeah. That's what he's known for. All right, Burns, what's next? It's got 3.7 million views now. Holy yeah, shit. Uh, well, talking with Sellout Talk, and you know, we've all kind of probably made money from advertisements. What's the worst job you've ever had before you fell into this? Fuck, I don't want to answer this. Um, I got, I have two. You want to go first, Jimmy? Yeah, I'll go first. Right. Uh, first one, uh, first one is right out of high school. I did heat and air, and I did residential. Which what that means is my ass was under houses and crawl spaces and the dirt and mud and spiders and snakes and shit installing ductwork and and heat and air units. It was a, I mean it, I guess on one hand it was very eye opening, but on the other hand it sucked because the whole thought of heat and air is oh yeah heat and air. But the problem is if you're there putting in the heat and air, you're not enjoying it. So if it's hot outside. You're going to put in the air conditioner, and then when you turn it on, you fucking leave. So you don't get to enjoy it. If it's cold outside and you're putting in the heat, you're freezing your balls off because once the heater comes on, you go on to the next job. So that sucked. And the other one that was just pure boredom, I was a overnight manager, which is just a cashier because I was the only one at the place. They, they make you sound like you're something special as a manager for a flash market. And that was the most boring job I've ever had. Mind-numbing it boring what, so that would be my two what is a flash market a gas station oh why don't you just call it a gas yeah. station well giving it this confusing name no 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 because gas station well i i I think the i've heard that name before too but it's like the smaller ones right you worked in like like at the actual gas station not like an am pm it was like you're just a like that right like you're yeah, in a yeah. little box yeah, well, no, it was a bigger one. Than oh, okay, that. that's what I was fucking flash market gas station. Don't tell me how to talk. What the What's fuck yours? Is a flash market. What's mine? No, it's, it's like a where gas Aaron worked. station. It's where Aaron yeah, worked. Kyle like didn't know either. Like a quick Jesus. stop. No, it's like where Aaron worked. It's like in, get, it's still let, a here. Gas let me station. let me break this down for you. It's a building that has gas pumps, and people come up and they fill their car with gas, and they pay you, <laughs> and they can come in and get a soda pop and a candy bar. Yeah, it's and called it had a, a Blimpies. Sounds like a yeah, fucking it's it's called, a gas station. Yeah, it sounds like a gas it, station. <laughs> it had a Blimpies where you could get subs during oh, the day. I Fuck love off! All of you. It, it's Blimpies. called a gas it's station. This guy's still like, what is like your, a gas what, station. What what is yours? Who, what is your job? Uh, I can go. Yeah, one of my worst jobs, and this one was just absolutely soul crushing, was working at a collection agency. Oh, like where you where you sit at a desk on an automatic dialer and collect people's debt, credit card debt that they haven't paid. You probably got hung up on a lot. Oh, dude! Like the people that are actually good at this job are the most are the biggest assholes you will ever meet in your life. And I was working there like around the time when the recession was starting to hit. Or whatever. So you would get people that have never been in a position where they like couldn't pay their bills. So you get all their sob stories all day. And then you get irresponsible people sometimes. Like the funniest one I had was like some 19 year old kid. And I was like, I did my whole spiel about how he owes money. And he was like, yeah, I was going to, I was going to call you guys and uh, see if you could put some more money on that card. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, you owe us $900. What? <laughs> that sucks. But And uh, the, the department I was in was the legal one, so it was like people that were about to get sued. And uh, that was the only job I never put in my two weeks when I just fucking left. It was just... Depressing. Yeah, it was just... Yeah, it was depressing, like, hearing people's... And you, you can't pretend like you give a shit about their problems. You have to just get their money. And that's... It's just not the person I... It's not the type of person I am, so it was just devastating. Kyle, what about you? Worked at McDonald's, sucked. It was like uh, I, wor- I worked at McDonald's too. Yeah, I was a manager. It was so like it was a one aspect. month stint, and like that was my my kind of thing as growing up. It's like I know this kind of sounds best, but I never wanted to work like fast food. Like I was always just like right. too prideful, and I was in college, so I was kind of older this time, and. I was staying in college for the summer, so I thought I would had to get. I thought I had to get a job to pay for all the bills and stuff. But it turned out that I actually did pretty well on like my uh, return checks. I really didn't have to, but so I got this job at McDonald's. Worst fucking experience. Like, I, I could probably go into this for. What a station bit. were you at? Were you fry cook? Were you grill? I was were the grill grill fry guy. Not the fry, yeah. but like the the grill and like the fry. The station. patties, yeah. You smush the patties and shit. Uh, well, you had to hand smush patties. 
No, no, no. You you pull down the compressor. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you so some. so the first thing that I knew this was going to be the worst job ever. I've told this story multiple times. So we did. We had to go to the orientation where you watch videos and stuff. And they kind of give you a rundown. And we go into this little this little room is probably like. 25 by 25 and there's five tables in there just fully loaded with people most of them younger than me um a lot of mexicans like older mexicans that barely spoke english and we're all sitting there waiting for somebody to come in and start like start this movie or the the instruction video the vhs tape (laughs) yeah so we're all sitting there and i'm just kind of like like these are some fucking weird people so i'm just kind of minding my own business and and we're all sitting at these tables, probably like six or seven people per table, five tables. And a lady finally walks in and she has like a big bowl. And, and we're kind of like, what? And she starts reaching the bowl and she's like, here, this will hold you guys over. And starts throwing candy on the table like we're fucking children. And I, that's my first cue. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, this is fucking weird. And all the people are like snatching all the candy up. And I'm like, it's free candy, man. But it was just so like childish. Like, here you guys go. Right. Let's start this up. Like throwing like handfuls rah-rah. of candy at the, t- like not even letting you pick one out of the bowl, like throwing handfuls of candy <laughs> on the table. And then, one out of the bowl. and so I got the job and there's a bunch of high school kids working there and like some prideful ass high school kids. So. One of the guys was, he would brag. He's like, I'm top 5% in the nation for building hamburgers. And I'm like, you're gay. What? <laughs> yeah. And he, he was just, he would brag about it. He's like top five speed and making hamburgers. And only reason I, I already knew the kid because he went to my dad's church and I've seen him a couple of times, like massive douchebag. And so he, he would all brag on that. Then I had this other high school kid, like, so when you put the patties down, you have to season them in the same order that you put them down, you know, just so they're, it's, it's a system. So they're all the same. And I would say I would put them all down and, and I would just splash all the shit on them, like no particular order. And, uh, and the kid was like, what are you doing, man? I'm like, I, I, I'm just fucking throwing the seasoning out. He's like, you can't do it. Like he's, he's like five or six years younger than me, like a 15 year old, like yelling at me for doing it wrong, you know? Every burger has to taste the same at every McDonald's. Yeah, trial. exactly. The whole fucking point. Exactly. That, you, you're like, I'm out of here, huh? Yeah, I said, fuck this. Dude, we should get McDonald's today. Oh, uh, We should. That's a, a, a Grand Mac yeah. sounds good. Colby, hey, what about you? Remember when uh, we did the double cheeseburger challenge? I do. It was disgusting. Yeah, mine's was terrible. Mine's pretty easy. I've been pretty, uh, I mean, I've been blessed to, I've had one, two, three, Three. Oh, yeah, you went to college for nine years and then yeah. Kyle hired you. Yeah, so exactly. Well, I met him at college too. So I, my first real job ever, I was, it was in between my sophomore year of college. I cleaned carpets, but I have no complaints about it because like people think that's really bad, but I, I, I loved it. I was just out there, you know, it's a different job. Yeah, it was hard some days when I'd have like eight jobs by myself, but no complaints. It taught me a lot. Like I'd never lived by myself. I never like had a job. I had never anything like that. So it was like a pretty eye opening when it was like, damn, I just lost, you know, 200 bucks in taxes. I have to pay, you know, for this and this. And then like, oh, I have $8 left. Like what the hell? So it was like, it helped. And then it, you know, kind of formed me for my next job, which I got, I was also blessed. Like they didn't really hire sophomores or like younger people to be intramural like referees at our school. It was always older people, but I was on the track team. And this guy gave me like a, oh, an interview type like lead. And then the guy actually liked me a lot. So I, re- I worked intramurals for the, all six years or seven years I was there. And I ended up like hiring all my friends because I'd been there for so long. And it sucked at times when like I would do a basketball tournament as a referee. I make good money, like 20, 25 bucks a game, but the, the life of a referee is the worst. Like you're, you're, there's no way that half the people leaving that gym are going to like you. Like you piss off the losing team and there are games where I'd piss off both teams. Just, you know, it just sucked, but I don't hate it. It again, like it got, it taught me a lot like of how to deal with annoying parents and, you know, coaches. And I was really, I got thick skin real quick. And I was, I, I, I was always like the older person, like I said. So I was, people would lean on me and I'd be like, Hey, you know what? You say another word, you're getting thrown out. And then like an older coach would be like, Oh, what'd you say? What are you going to do? And I'd be like, see you, dude, you're out here. You're out, and you get paid a bonus if you threw people out. Really? Yeah. So nice. we would have competitions. Like, all right, like who's gonna have the quickest trigger? And then my buddy, my roommate, I was living with, he threw a dude out in warmups. Phil, he threw a dude out in warmups because the guy like touched the rim, which is we weren't allowed to dunk. 
And this guy dunked. He's like, you're really going to throw me out for this? And he's like, sorry, dude, got to. And we're like, damn it, Phil, you can't throw a kid out in warm-ups for touching the rim. Like, they paid $800 (laughs) to be in this basketball tournament. He's obviously their best player. And then, so, yeah, that was an interesting game to be a supervisor for. And it was, yeah, it was hectic. But, yeah, those are my two, like, and then I started working with Kyle right out after that. So, hashtag blast. There you go. Hashtag blast. Here we are. Here we are making a podcast that... May end up with some sponsors. It may. Hashtag. There might be a really funny one, too, that I'm going to make Kyle read. I'd rip out pocket pussies. Do they want to sponsor us? We don't know. We don't know. (laughs) We don't know yet. Have any of you guys ever used a pocket pussy? (laughs) No. No, I haven't. (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay. I have it. Have you, Kyle? No, I I didn't even know it was a thing until not that long ago. True story. I was at a, a party one time, and this girl is telling us like her boyfriend was uh, like a baseball player in like Kansas or something like trying to go pro or whatever. And she sent him like one molded of her and they like would get on Skype and he would like use it and stuff. Oh, and she's giving God. us this conversation. We're all just like, I don't really know you, but I don't really fucking like you anymore because this is weird. What? Like in super detail and stuff. And then anyway, long story short, like a week later, she cheated on with one of my friends, a.k.a. bitch. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we do. it's it's time for some life advice. Uh, don't we have time for Colby's question of the day? Oh yeah, do you have one, Colby? Yeah, it's super easy. I I, I cheated and just kind of went on online and we got some help. But it's uh just gonna be what is something that is not illegal right now that you guys think like what's the most legal thing that you guys believe should be illegal? Does that make sense? Cody boxes. So you think Cody boxes should be illegal? That's actually a good one. What is that? Things that are legal that I think should be illegal. A Cody box basically burns is like it's a it's like streaming. Like you know how you go and you stream something off of. Oh a, yeah, a we talked about. Oh yeah, we talked open, about that before. Open carrying a long rifle into a police station. Boom! There you go. Yeah. Burns. Religion. Religion. <laughs> I think women openly having kids with or not not women but people openly having kids. Will will be illegal one day. It's gonna be like China. You're only be allowed a certain amount. Yeah, there's too many that. dumb fucks out there having kids that should not have kids. That we should we should carry that topic over to the next episode because I saw like a projection where in 2030 there's projected to be 18 billion people and it, it won't work. The the Earth. What's won't the most? The, what's the most they can feed people? It's like 11 billion or something. It's like something, the but the, the we're the 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 world's it's. It's gonna go to shit. Like we're talking some crazy shit, but we can talk about that another day. Oh, what would ha- I mean? What happens? Like, is there just no? No, let's let's save that. That's a good topic. We'll talk. You guys need to catch the next episode. We'll talk about how the world. What would happen if it got too overpopulated? Good. I'm gonna do some research and come below everyone's yeah. fucking. Go mind. watch. Go watch. Go watch Inferno, the new Tom Hanks. I'm gonna That's watch exactly what it's about. Oh, so really? Watch. Maybe I do want to see that. Yeah. I'm gonna watch Idiocracy cool. and watch that. All right, Burns. Life advice. We're we're wrapping into the last ten or fifteen minutes. All right, we're gonna put uh, our disclaimer in the middle here right now. We are not responsible for your actions based on the shenanigans of this show. All right, so our, <laughs> our life advice. Uh, I got I got three of them this week, but I'm gonna. The first one is kind of pretty brief. It goes off last week's sympathy blowjob question that Jimmy okay. was not appreciating of. Kyle, you missed this. We had a kid who had... Kyle would have uh, been proud. Yeah, we had a kid that had uh, that was uh, recovering from leukemia, and he was wondering how to like deal with the diagnosis, and I suggested getting sympathy blowjobs. You would agree with me, right? Uh, He can try. No, Burns right? was but, saying... Okay, just, okay, okay so we had a, stop. We, we, we had he's going to fuck it up worse than you did. <laughs> Put it Let's on go. me. Yeah. All right, so this guy had a follow-up question. This wasn't this isn't the same guy that emailed us. This is just a listener that heard this. He wants to know, like, what's the limit to where you can ask for a sympathy blowjob. Like, how sick do you have to be where it's acceptable to ask for... To where you're not a creep or not going to get yeah, like, hit like, for harassment? Yeah. You have to be dying. Dying? You have to be chronic. Yeah. What if you have, like, a... No. What if you have, what if you have a cold? What? I'd be afraid to give a dude with a blowjob cancer, even though I know you can't get cancer through <laughs> what? a What? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> just talking about giving dudes well, love I jobs. mean I know you can't like you that's know. not what we're asking though <laughs> that's not, not the age. question it's not where age. is your mind at well that's what I'm saying if somebody asked me for a sympathy blowjob I mean I'd be like sorry dude but that's no 
Like it's weird. I feel like I mean, if it's if he's that close to you know passing on, yeah, I think it. I just I think you have to be pretty sick, Burns. Yeah. What if like, you're like What if you're like have like a broken back or something, and you're like in the hospital, you can't move. Get the BJ. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's like you're I just mean, sucking the dick of a dead guy. <laughs> like he can't move. Like a paralyzed guy. Like that'd be fucking weird. Like you just. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> it's so great to have, so great to have I mean, Kyle what? back when I try to yeah, get what? sympathy sex for my wife like you know so like say I want to have sex and like I can tell she doesn't like I'm not just gonna say like let's have like like it's a weird subject because you can't try and like if you try and like persuade somebody to have sex with you it's almost kind of like super rapey well, they didn't, yeah they didn't want to have yeah, sex in the first place like like me like that's why I get all butt hurt sometimes when my wife doesn't want to have sex, but I'm never just like straight up like, like I want to have sex, you know, like let's do it right now. And she's like, I don't really want to. And I'm like, well, come on, let's do it. You know, like that's fucking weird. Like that's, that's called rape, dude. Yeah. It, it, at, at some point you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, okay. I remember she didn't want to do this and like she doesn't, she's not like into it. And this feels <laughs> fucking like the R word. Wrong. Oh, that's W. <laughs> okay. All right, next question. All right, so this one is pretty gross. Nice. But, uh, I got this. There's, we don't we don't have any limits to what we talk about in here. He says, hey, guys, uh, this is going to get a little raunchy, but bear with me. My girlfriend texted me last night saying, so I have a yeast infection. And immediately I'm thinking, okay, this is gross, but it happens. And I'm telling her to go get checked out because I think it's common sense to get yourself checked out when your genitals are on the line. And she said, nah, I just have a special cream for it. And he's wondering if he should just uh, bail on this. Or How hot if, uh, is she? How hot is she? I mean, yeast infections is not, like, a rare thing. Oh, I was going to say, no, you can get them from going to really, a, like, yeah. Well, look at it this way. But, 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 hold on. Go Google yeast no, infection. No, I'm not Google. Come no. back and answer Dude, that question. I got something. Google, got blue, Google no, blue taco. No, Go blue Google waffle. Blue taco. Blue waffle. Blue waffle. waffle. Blue waffle. Uh, no. Or blue waffle. No, I'm not, I'm not Googling that. I've seen it. You can't what? unsee it either. Let's take it from this approach, though. Do you guys like beer? I do. Yeah. Okay. Not me. You got to put yeast. It has yeast. You got to put it? yeast yeah. in some beer to get that good taste, so maybe it'll taste better. I remember when I was in college, like years ago, there was a story. <laughs> there was a story that was uh, like a whole county got yeast infections, like because there was something with the water or something like that, like. What, you're going to ditch your girlfriend because she drank the fucking water? Kyle's looking at yeast infections now. This is gross. Uh, here's my answer. Is My answer, well, I'm not looking. No, we're not fucking that pussy, dude. I'm not, oh my God. I'm not saying. All right, here's my Holy answer. Shit. If she's taking cream and she's hot, oh my God. don't talk yeah, I mean, to her for a couple of weeks. Find out the average time it takes yeah, to I don't clear like, uh, up. I went on WebMD. You're not supposed to like have sex because a condom won't work either isn't it, it like isn't it also transferable like can't you get a yeast oh, yeah. infection yeah, yeah, of yeah. a mouth or dick or yeah probably you don't want that he's thinking he could get a he's like should i ditch her so i don't get herpes i mean you're not gonna get herpes from it i mean what's herpes the, isn't a yeast infection yeah that's a different thing and i think there's 50% a level, yeah. of the 50 of the population has hpv anyway so you probably already have it all right let me uh <laughs> let me do a little diagram for you guys listening at home all right the left axis the x-axis is hotness the bottom y-axis is no STDs, and there's a line <laughs> where it's like yeast infection, herpes, something, something, AIDS, and you got to go down the line with how hot she is versus what STD she has. If it's herpes and a ten model, and you wear a condom, is it worth it? I don't know. I'm asking you guys. I think Fuck I, no, I an don't unbreakable. Want if you wear a condom, though, I'm saying like if she has herpes and she's like a a ten model already, like she's not getting any hotter. She's not. And she's not losing the herpes. At some is point, it, uh, someone's going to date it, uh, her. Is it mouth herpes or genital herpes? Uh, I don't know. There's, I guess, there could be two tiers on my little X Y chart. I just drew. Is there a such a thing? Is there such a thing as butt herpes? I don't probably. If For not, gay bo- gay dudes, butt warts. Huh. I'm googling butt. Next warts. question. No, no, no. It's, yeah, no. next question. Yeah, but final question. Well, my advice to this guy is that like she doesn't really have to go to a doctor. Like the cream will take care of it. Just give it a couple of weeks. I'm with Burns again. Nah, dude, just Bur- fucking Bur- wait for it. Burnsy, Burnsy MD. Yeah, that's my uh, doctor's opinion. Uh, this last one's pretty simple, but it's a good one to wrap the show up with Valentine's Day coming up in uh, a week from today, actually, that we're recording this. Uh, he's a freshman in high school. He just started dating this chick recently. 
So it's nothing too serious. Does he need to buy her a Valentine's Day gift? And my opinion is that you have made a huge mistake to start oh, dating 100%. a girl before. before all that, all that he can, he, no, no, no. Let he me can go easily last. get off with a $10 box of chocolates and some Walmart roses. Yeah, but you don't know you ain't getting what this girl's expecting, $10 though. Rose. All right, I'll she, go last. I don't know this girl, so I don't know what she's expecting. But dating a girl like... She's probably here. Look, look at the, look in the mirror, dude. Because she's probably only with you because she needs a Valentine. Yeah, that Ooh, might be it too. You might be boom. getting used. Fucking. Or burnt. she wants her pussy licked. Oh yeah. Okay. Here's about it that way. Here's my. This is this is my theory on Valentine's Day. I'm not going to win over a lot of girls here, but I think that people set the bar, and this is a lot of dudes' faults. Too fucking Way high. Too high on a made yes. up. It's a made up fucking holiday. Yes. And I, thank you again. Like I, I completely get like, okay, do something nice, make a nice dinner, do this and that. But you got people like dropping G stacks on like, oh, I gotta get her about like, I gotta get her a coat. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. Like, no, you're in high school. If you're spending more than ten dollars and you're not guaranteed to get like farther, again, Burns is right. You're not gonna marry this girl. You're already wasting your time. 10 bucks, 15 bucks max. She's not going to remember it. I don't remember what I got my girlfriend in Valentine's Day, but I mean, you have to do something. Take, you're not take, her, out to, take to, her out to like Applebee's to orgasm or something. Town. That's where high school yeah. kids go, right? They go to Applebee's. Take her to Applebee's. Simple. So I, w- I would, hey, listen I up, buddy, that's that. listening to this advice. I broke up with a girl the day before her birthday because I didn't want to get her anything. Boom. Fucking kick her to the curb if she loves you. She'll you're come back to you. savage. After. Kick yeah. her to the Christ- curb. Any, like, any what, Christmas, what I would always break up with my girlfriend because I was like, this is fucking dumb. Like, why am I. Like this is, well, this is what he could, I don't even get my mom a present. Why the fuck would I get you a present? <laughs> I don't even have money. If a freshman right, in high school advice. probably doesn't have his own I have money. My advice for this. I have my advice. Break up with her on Sunday the twelfth, and then uh, get back together with her on Friday, the seventeenth. If she loves you, is he this cheap of a dude? He can't go spend ten bucks on some chocolates and a card. I say he does that. I say you at least drop some. I mean, it depends. I mean, like the thing that I'm, I'm assuming he's trying to get some Valentine's Day action. That's what I'm saying so too. Yeah, get her a ten dollar box of chocolate. The thing man. is that a freshman in high school, he's probably borrowing that money from his dad anyway. So now your dad just supplied you with the dome that you're going to get. Cares? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, just not your money. Just borrow the ten, yeah. fifteen bucks. I'm 100 percent agreeing. Yeah, I think there we just, go. I think you should just break up with her and then uh, hit her back up on that Friday. Be single for Valentine's Day? He's not gonna get any. He's not gonna well, get any. Who cares? It's nothing. a fucking made up day. I fucking yeah, it's a hate that. It's, it's a made up. It day. is a made up day. It's a made up. All day. All right. Well, we forgot to plug. Um, uh, I'll do it really quick, and I know it'll be plugged in the outro too. But guys, we are on multiple platforms: well, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, all of them. You can watch it wherever your little heart desires. And Kyle, why is iTunes so important for them to subscribe over there? iTunes is important for the longevity of the show because if we don't make that <laughs> fucking cash money, we will no longer be doing the show because we're all friends, but we're only friends when money's involved. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. And that is why you need to subscribe on iTunes. No, seriously, though. And that's well, why Kyle's that- not a sellout right there because he literally just told you Hey, leave a review too. You can leave more than one review. Let's see if we can move up the charts. We were like, our the- goal is to our goal is to get to five hundred reviews. Yeah, we popped to out of the one fifty. We popped out of the one fifty. Yeah, I we're at like two twenty now. I think the problem. Shit. I think one of the problems is is when we started spreading it out. Some and this is not a problem. We're still a young podcast, but I think when we offered so many options, people were like, oh, I don't have to listen to it right. on iTunes, I, which is not a bad thing. We'll get it all back. Yeah, we want you guys on iTunes. Leave a five star review. Leave a leave a review and subscribe to where you get notifications for the podcast. And I just want to say really quick before we go, it's good to have Kyle back. It is, yes, sir. Hey, if you if you go leave a review and a five star and you put "I love Kyle," I will screenshot it and tweet it. How about that, there motherfucker? You, there you go. There I'll retweet it. I'll retweet and it to my fans. I have to fans. ask you guys. I have to ask you guys really quick. Did Atlanta blow it or did New England win? Atlanta, it? Atlanta blew, it. blew it. They fucking had seven or eleven rushes, Freeman for seventy-five yards. Did you have any money on it? Yep, I lost one hundred and fifty bucks, but technically I lost like four eighty because at one point I had well, I had Atlanta plus seven point five for plus three hundred. So I was looking, oh. I was looking amazing. All my friends are texting me like, "Dude, you're about to fucking win." That was a terrible bet. And I'm like, "Ha!" Huh. And then yeah. they started coming back, and I'm like, "Fuck." Yeah, it was. It was. Tom Brady is the goat, though. Just even if you don't like him, he's the best quarterback ever. Atlanta oh, blew it. Down for sure, oh, Atlanta man. blew it for sure. And the bottom line is, like what Kyle said, rushing. They ran the ball two times in the with Devontae Freeman at the end of the game, and he was averaging like nine yards a carry. 
at least you're running out clock. Brady had way too much clock. And it, I mean, nothing against the Patriots. They totally, they won that game, but Atlanta also blew it. It's I think fixed. it's no, no, it's Atlanta, fixed. Atlanta fixed. blew the game. Atlanta blew it, but if they didn't, if it, no, there's New no England, way it's fixed birds because fixed. Roger Goodell did not want to hand yes, I agree. craft it's that not trophy. Fixed. Super Bowl. Fake no, Super Bowl. If you watch the game, no. there's no way Goodell, it was Goodell fixed. got there's, his ass booed off the stage. If anything, that the happens Patriots to like every fucked. commissioner in sports, so. except for Adam well, Silver. This was because of the whole fleet game. And Adam Silver, everyone likes because he's not David Stern yet. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you for, if you made it all the way to the end, you're the true MVPs. We appreciate you. And uh, get active with us in the comments, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. We're watching. I have HPV. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the PTFO Podcast. If you enjoyed the show and are watching on iTunes, please leave a five-star review. If you're on YouTube, please hit that like button and leave a friendly comment below. This show is also available on Spotify, Google Play, and Facebook. If there is a topic you would like us to discuss in a future show, or you just want to reach out to us for advice on life's everyday struggles, you can reach out to us with the contact information available down below. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you back every Wednesday and Sunday for a new show. Have yourself a wonderful day, and we'll see you later.